All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about two pistol caliber carbines, which in my personal opinion are some of the most high quality and most unique models currently on the civilian market. So the two specific models that I have here in front of you are the BNT TP9, which is on top, and the BNT APC9, which is on the bottom. Now, there's a number of reasons to compare these two guns um, and why you'll see them be compared to each other a lot on different internet forums or on different social media pages. And that's because they're both manufactured by Bruger and Tomit in Switzerland. So that meaning that they're both very high quality, well-designed firearms, but they're also uh, very similarly priced. And they get used in a lot of the same roles as far as their use in... Uh, commercial customers and police and you know law enforcement and military customers um, they kind of fill the same niche so uh, for those reasons you'll kind of see people somewhat hotly debate on which one of these is better you know which one is the better bang for your buck which one has better performance and reliability which one will get you killed in a gunfight and which one won't uh, I would caution you to avoid you know, getting into that line of thought when comparing these two. Um, in my experience, having both having owned both of these for several years now, I think they're more or less the same animal. They just are kind of they're they're different in less ways than they are similar. So, when comparing one to the other, um, there's really only a few marketable differences that I've noticed when using both of these, and that's the purpose of this video. Is I just want to convey to you guys. Um, what those differences are realistically and which one might suit you better for your intended role. So starting off with the TP9, uh, the TP9 is a very, very lightweight 9mm pistol caliber carbine with an action that cycles extremely quickly. So what I mean by that is um, just like how the MP9, the submachine gun, the full auto version of this gun, how it cycles very quickly and spits you know, bullets down range at a very rapid rate. Um, because it was designed to do that when this gun was translated into a semi-auto only platform, it still has a bolt that cycles very, very quickly. And there's a couple different consequences of that. Um, a good consequence is that the bolt is very lightweight and therefore you don't feel the bolt crashing into the rear of the receiver nearly as much and has a very low recoil impulse. Now, a negative to that is the bolt cycles so quickly that traditional 9mm suppressors will actually speed it up too much and cause parts breakage and accelerated wear and tear on the system. So for that reason, the BNT TP9 uses a proprietary suppressor. Uh, you'll notice that the suppressor on the TP9 is uh, very large compared to something like, say, the Omega 9K from Silencer Co., which is on my APC9. And that's because the large internal volume of the TP9 suppressor doesn't accelerate the cyclic rate of the TP9 so much that it actually breaks the gun. So uh, for that reason, BNT chose to do a proprietary oversized three lug attachment system for the suppressor. It's to basically force you to use the correct suppressor for this gun. Um, obviously, if you find some way to run a different suppressor on this gun, BNT is not going to warranty that whenever you inevitably break the gun. So uh, keep that in mind. If a proprietary, sister, or proprietary suppressor is a deal breaker for you, then the TP9 may not be the one you want to go with. So, um, like I mentioned, the TP9 is extremely lightweight, and that's due to its usage of uh, polymer components, such as the upper and lower receiver, the trigger components, the foregrip, the folding stock, the magazines. Uh, those are all polymer, and they lead to the gun being, like, scary light. I mean... It's, it's like handling a toy, basically. Now, it's not to say that the gun is, like, janky feeling or it feels cheap. It feels very high quality, but uh, it is extremely lightweight. So that's definitely a plus in the TP9 column. Now, the APC9, in comparison, uh, is a bit heavier. You know, it's not overly heavy. It's not as heavy as something like an MP5 or some other, you know, overpriced, outdated system. Uh, oh, the HK fanboys are going to be mad about that, but anyway, um, it definitely has had some, uh, some weight shaved off compared to some older PCCs, but it, not to the extent that the TP9 has. So the APC9, I would say, is more 
slightly more rugged of a system, just have the fact that it has a extruded aluminum upper receiver and uses more metal components. It's probably going to be a bit more durable, but realistically, neither of these guns is really going to go through that type of abuse with most consumers, so take that for what it's worth. Um, the APC-9, I'd say its biggest selling factor compared to the TP-9 is uh, its familiarity as far as the controls and stuff goes. Uh, it feels more like shooting an AR as far as the selector switch and the trigger and the mag release and stuff like that. Uh, it feels more like shooting an AR-15 or something that's more um, familiar to a lot of users. Um, the big difference, and in my opinion, the biggest downfall of the APC-9 is the charging handle. You know, when comparing it to an AR. Uh, the charging handle is uh, non-reciprocating, which is great, but it's located on the upper receiver very far forward on the upper, and it actually gets in the way of mounting flashlights and other accessories to the gun. So um, I had to get a little creative with how I mounted my flashlight and when I mount an IR laser to this gun because the charging handle poses such a problem. I prefer to use either an offset mount or a swivel mount, um, like the one on this Surefire M300 Pro, uh, so that I can swivel the flashlight up and out of the way and tuck it into the side of the gun as much as possible. Um, the APC-9 has, uh, it comes with Picatinny rails, but it also comes with M-Lock slots underneath those Picatinny rails, and that's great. That allows you to use a lot of different flashlight options. What's not so great is almost all of them interfere with reaching the charging handle, and in fact, when you run the charging handle manually, despite the fact that it does not cycle when the gun is firing, the charging handle still has to be able to move back and forth in order to operate the weapon when you're charging it. So if your flashlight physically makes it incapable of moving back and forth, then that poses a problem. So um, what I ended up having to do was I cut off the right side charging handle and that completely just removed the problem as far as my flashlight goes. Now, a problem I still run into is if I run an ATPL or a PEC-15 or a D-Ball or a wider laser on top of the top rail, uh, then I actually have to reach underneath it to get to the left side charging handle, and it's just not ideal. Um, it just gets in the way. Now, if you use a thinner laser, like a CQBL or an NGAL, if you're fortunate enough to have access to one of those, um, that's problem solved. That, that laser is thin enough that it doesn't really get in the way of the charging handle, but that's my big gripe on the APC-9, is when they went from the reciprocating charging handle that was located by the ejection port on the original model, to the non-reciprocating forward located charging handle, they created some issues with, you know, accessorizing the gun. But other than that, there's really no complaints I have about the APC-9. If you can get creative with it or just figure out something that works for you and doesn't get in the way of the charging handle, the system is very modular. It's very friendly with all sorts of different nine millimeter suppressors. Um, it has very low recoil due to its hydraulic buffer dampening system which actually catches the bolt carrier as it travels rearward and slows it down so you don't get as much of a jolt in your shoulder whenever the gun fires. Um, so that's all great. It's a very modern 21st century system that reduces recoil in you know, a similar way to how the MP5 reduces recoil using its roller delayed system. Um, anytime you can make a pistol caliber carbine super controllable, even on full auto, uh, that really validates the platform across all, you know, fields of its use is having something that's very controllable and that can put a lot of rounds on target very quickly. So uh, the APC-9 does that very well. Uh, another thing that the APC-9 does extremely well is accepting different magazines. So unlike the TP-9, which limits you to B&T's somewhat brittle, easily breakable proprietary magazines, uh, B&T gives you the option of getting either a lower receiver that takes Glock magazines or uh, SIG P320 magazines. So uh, if magazine compatibility is a, you know, make it or break it kind of deal for you, then the APC-9 is definitely the one to go for. So um, those really are the big differences between these two guns that I have noticed in, you know, shooting these during the day or with night vision, you know, with loaded down with accessories or stripped down and shoved into a backpack or the center console of my truck. 90% um, of the time I don't notice a real difference between the two, but if you are building one with the you know, intended purpose of 
any of those, you know, uses I just talked about, then hopefully this video did a good job on kind of informing you on the difference between the two and, you know, the realistic differences that you're going to see using them. So anyway, I'm going to cut the video off there, but if you got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and thank you for watching.